Hello and today we'll be returning to the series about OpenTX and how to do certain things with your radio and today I want to talk about logical switches, what are they, what can you use them for and some examples of how to do things. It's often something that people are a little bit scared about because when you look at it and you start going through some of the options it looks like gobbledygook. You, it's it's kind of a little bit computery but logical switches kind of are and we'll talk about things like ands, ors, xors and then sort of more normal operations like equals, greater than, less than, what we can use them for. It's something I've had to think a little bit about because one of the problems with logical switches is there are a few perhaps typical use cases and then there's like, well, if you want to do something, it, you can probably do it. So I want to take you through some of the operations we have. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples of how I might use it and I'll show you a sort of more complicated one, a, 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 that I've used in the past. In short, a logical switch is basically a pretend switch, if you like. It's like a virtual switch, I would call it rather than a logical one, based upon a certain number of conditions. And this switch, which will be called something like L01 to L whatever, can then be used in a mix or alerts, or it can itself be used as another logical switch to decide if yet another logical switch becomes true and that can then be used in mix as well. So you can basically stack these on top of one another and come up with quite complicated and uh, intricate sort of solutions based around them if you want to. For the average quad flyer there's not many times you'll really want to use this but as long range quads have become more of a norm and there's lots of telemetry involved or if you're on any sort of uh, fixed wing where you may have many modes, again a lot of telemetry and you've got a much more sort of complicated flight control where you, you have certain conditions that you might want to come true, that's where they come into their own. This is by no means an extensive list of every single possible situation or type of logical switch you've got, this is just a sort of flavour if you like, but hopefully um, if you look at what we're doing here you can go forward and, and look at the other things and see how you can stitch these together and, and make the thing you want to. You can do all of this on OpenTX Companion but I like to show it on the radio itself because whenever I need to do something it's at the field and I want to know how to do it on the radio and I think that's always useful. Anyway let's dive in. Okay so first let's get into the right page and I'm using this, um, what is it, it's an X9D Lite I think. Uh, but it's pretty much the same in, in any radio, it's just a case of different buttons to get there. Anything running OpenTX is, is going to work the same way. So what I'm going to do is um, get to my model and I'm going to go ahead and go to logical switches and set up the first one. So the first one I thought we'd look at the, the AND condition. And this is something you might use if you're running something like Ardu pilot where all the modes seem to be on one channel and sometimes it's like a case of well I haven't got like a six position switch or a rotary dial that's going to do that what can I do to get more control and th maybe the AND conditions comes in quite nice here so all we do is we go to the function and we set it to AND and uh, I'll just explain these in the meantime OR means one switch or another exclusive OR means one switch or the other but not both whereas or means one switch or the other or both but we're going to do and which means both switches have to be active so we can do function one we can use that switch set it to down and then switch to oh, I won't use that because that's, <laughs> that's a a momentary switch we'll use SC down and we can even put an extra switch on to say only activate this when another switch is down and delay and duration I'll come to. But once those two switches are down it means LO0 is active and you see it pops up when we have it there. Now what we can do with LO0 are, are several things. We can go round to the mixes. So on this mix we've already got some things like uh, we've got a, a mode set up on a certain switch but what we could do is um, if we go in and do an insert after and if I make my source max where are we? there we go and then I want to say for example I want to set the switch in a certain position let's say there whenever LO0 is set, 
find that. And if I do my multiplex, it says replace, that means it will override that channel. So now when we do something specific, it, um, it jumps away from SA and goes to whatever we do in L01. Now you can actually do more with that because we can use LO0 as a conditional in itself. So if I say I want to do another AND, and my first switch here is going to actually be LO0, and my second switch is going to be that one downwards. Then we basically have a, a, a single logical switch that it has to be set from three positions. So we need this one down and this one down to get LO0. And then we need that one down to get LO2. And then we can use LO2 as a different combination. And we can string those together to get very complicated ands and ors and xors if we want to, to get the exact few switches um, combinations that, that we want in order to produce a condition and um, do that. I mean obviously when you're overriding channels there's things you can do on single switches anyway so that but that is just an idea of something you can do with uh, these logical switches in this situation using the AND and ORs. So another reason this might be quite cool is for if you've got telemetry on your system. In my Tyro 119 I put smart port telemetry on. It's actually on F port it's not saying that. And so we've got loads of stuff we can get in a telemetry receiver. So what I can do is use that telemetry um, in a switch. So if I go here and I'm going to use um, a greater than function. Now this is where they, they look a little bit weird. You've got A equals X, A tilde X, I'll come to that one in a second, A greater than X. And this is the one we're going to use. Now A greater than X is basically saying something is bigger than a specific number. Uh, there's another one called A is greater than B and that is basically saying that an input is greater than another thing. So rather than a, an actual number here you're saying like if throttle is greater than aileron for example. But A greater than X is we're actually saying a number. So I'm going to say, now you can scroll through these but it's much easier to, if you do a long press then you can actually uh, pick the telemetry and in my telemetry I've got a whole bunch of stuff and I figure that something you might be interested if you've got like um, a GPS or something like that is you might be interested like well what happens if I accidentally go like above um, at a certain height and I want to alert myself for that what can I do and let's say we want to know if we go above 100 meters now of course on beta flight you can set up limits so they flash up in your OSD and stuff um, but you can also do things like this so we've just set this up as LO1 so what we'll do now is we'll go to the special functions and we'll set ourselves up uh, a trigger as you see most of these ones are play tracks for different modes and stuff but again because it's like a switch we can basically get to LO0 or was it LO1? I think it's LO1 that we made which is our alert that we're, we're going over and we can play a track or a sound to say you know here's an alert I don't have one <laughs> but you know we, we'd have something that let's because I don't have one set there we you know we play we'll play ourselves a little uh, tick sound or something to say that and of course there's loads of telemetry stuff in there we can use and we can link that back in if we want to with the mix so we say okay we've gone over 100 meters um, we can we can do something in the mix to say set return to home if we really wanted to or something like that I wouldn't advise it but that's something you can do so you, the, the point is with a, a logical switch like this you can use it to make other logical switches, you can use it in the special functions to play tracks or something like that, and you can use it back in the mixes to override something or do something, or use it as a physical switch. Um, so I said I'd talk about the tilde thing. I'm just going to go back to the other model, just because uh, that model tends to shout at me about things. So we've got LO0, LO2. If we go to LO3 and we do another one, there's one called A equals X. 
and there's some configurations where you have to have your stick sort of mid in order for it to uh, do something like for example position hold works uh, for many flight controllers if your throttle is dead center but if you've got FPV goggles on often you don't know where dead center is so you can kind of guess but it'd be nice to know about it so if you said a equals x uh, and then say my first function is going to be throttle and it should equal zero so throttle goes from minus 100 to plus 100 in, in OpenTX terms um, and if that happens so let's get a beep set for that one so we know when we've hit it so let's say when we're at LO3 we want to play a sound and we'll repeat that sound every second so let's see if we can hit it oh no, nope. gone again. It's somewhere in there. But you can see how hard that is to hit. Um, now you might be right right in there in terms of being on the right bit of throttle. Usually there's a bit of wiggle room on these things. So that tilde function, where it's quite useful, it's, it's kind of saying if it equals this within 0.9 up and down. So if I change this, instead of saying a equals x, a tilde x, I mean you can hear straight away we've got a little bit of wiggle room there so it's easier to hit we can stay in there and you can hear the beeps going on. So that's quite useful for matching certain things. So let's, let's get rid of that one. So then I thought about some other functions and how we can talk about the delay and um, the duration. So I thought, what if you've got like, this is just hypothetical, it wouldn't really happen. What if you've got a quarter and every time you're like above 80%, you know, the engines get really warm or the motors get really warm. And if you stay above that for like five seconds, you've got a, a danger of your, your motors bursting into flames. I'm just going to get rid of all of these so I don't have to think about them. So this is a, a good use of A, the A is greater than, than X. So if I say... I'm messing with the throttle and if my throttle goes above let's say 80 we should be pushing it hard um, and let's add a switch here to say yes we must have SD down for this to take effect now if I did that as it stands And I'm going to say I want to play a warning sound when that happens. And I should explain that this little one here means that it's going to repeat every second. But I don't, I don't, I'm okay just, you know, blipping up there occasionally. It's if I stay there. So I thought this is a, a good way of using the delay. So if we go back to that logical switch and we say don't do it unless we've spent five seconds above there and once you've done it I think after it's beeped at us for three seconds it, it should shut up. So what what this means is we've got a duration which means even if our logical switch is true after three seconds it becomes untrue and to make it happen again we have to take it out of the condition and bring it back in. The delay is saying don't make that switch active until we've had that condition true for five seconds in this case. So if we test this if we move this up, count to about five, one, two, three, four. There's our beeps. And after three seconds, you see the yellow ones disappeared. So unless we then drop under and go back up and wait another five seconds, nothing's gonna happen. And then it's gonna go for three seconds and stop.
Now there's one I really want to show you because a few people asked me how I did it and I was using, this was the test I was doing for the Ghost and what I did, I hooked this up and I had this servo and in order to make, to check how the signal worked, I went off walking with this and I put this in sweep and I just basically programmed this through here. So you see that is sweeping and that is done through the fact that I've put this switch on. But this is all done through um, a logical switch, which I'll show you. I've just taken the ghost module out because I, I don't know if that causes interference with the camera. Many times these things do. Uh, different radio, of course, this one, but runs OpenTX, so it's much the same thing. And this uses the timer function. And, uh, you know, it took me a, a good couple of goes to sort this out, but I wanted to show you as what we can do in terms of being flexible and, and making things happen. So if we look at this function, uh, this is uh, the timer function. And the two numbers are pretty simple. V1 is the on time, V2 is the off time. So this means that this function is going to turn LO0 on for a second and then off for a second if we've got SG down. And SG is that one, so if we do that, get it, you can see L1 pulsing on and off. That's the first part of it. And then I also used this function here. And what we've got here is a logical two. And I'm using and, and I want SG down and not LO1. So this is a way to get a sort of the pulse in the other direction, if you like. So every time LO1 is on, it means LO2 is not on. But when, and that exclamation mark means not LO1. So when LO1 is not on, and SG is down, then LO2 is on. So basically we've got, if we come out, we can see that we've got LO1 and LO2 pulsing back and forth with these two functions. And then what we did is on the mix, we did two maxes on the rudder function. And we've got one here with uh, a weight of 100 and an offset with 100. And that is on when LO1 is on. And the other one, which we've got with a weight of 100 and offset of minus 90, hence it's the other way, we've got when LO2 is on. So between the two of them, they're basically overriding the channel to make the servo go back and forth every second. Um, that's not a common thing to do, but you can see the power of using logical conditions and stringing them together in different ways in order to make your model do all sorts of things. So if you can imagine it, you can do it. It might get complicated, but it's all doable and it's really quite a, an interesting and powerful system of OpenTX. Well, there you go. That was logical switches on your OpenTX radio. Very powerful, very useful under the right circumstances, but not necessarily an everyday thing. As I said, it's not an extensive list of all the different options you've got for switches. I thought these were maybe the most typical, but if there's something you like, oh, I wish you'd covered this, then uh, let me know what it is. And if, you know, a few people want the same thing, then I can always do another video. But until that time, I hope that's been helpful. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.